about the world today, in this age of globalization and the sharing of information, cultures have never clashed so violently. Some of them can be more different. In the United States, slurping noodles loudly is considered bad taste, but it's a compliment to the chef in Japan. In North America, we have the tooth fairy, but kids in Asia throw their teeth on the roof. We are learning about so many different cultures as they are becoming more relevant in this ever-connected world. But are we learning about these cultures or just the fact that they're there? The fact is that different cultures are not getting along. There is a lack of familiarity between groups of people around the world. That's why hate crimes and xenophobia are still prominent in many countries, despite this age of interconnectedness. We don't understand each other because we are different from one another, and we see these differences as facts instead of learning to understand them. Let's stop thinking about the people of the world for a second and start thinking about the people in your life. Is there anyone that you're unfamiliar with and avoid simply because you don't understand them? Are you a rebellious teenager, commonly repeating the phrase "Mom, you just don't understand," then slamming the nearest door? Or do you avoid Sharkeisha because you think she's weird for having four or five, six, eleven cats, and you're more of a dog person? Despite being near one another, we're not connected. We tend to gravitate towards those who are similar to us because they're more familiar. However, we avoid and, in some cases, fight those who are different simply because we do not understand them. This isn't good. Humans are social animals. We should be trying to comprehend one another. And knowing facts isn't enough. We should be understanding why we are the way that we are. Otherwise, we'd be carbon copies of our former selves, and the world would be an unfamiliar and closed-minded place. But there's a problem. We don't seem to have much in common. There are age barriers, social barriers, culture barriers, even language barriers. So you say, kind of, what, what do I do? Is there anything we can all share and get along with? Well, fortunately, the one thing that unites all of humanity happens to be my favorite thing in the world: food. <laughs> the basic sustenance we need for survival plays an important role in every single society, in every single person, and in you. We should use, you should use food as a vessel to bring us closer to those around us, and to introduce us to different cultures. And that way, we can be closer and understand the people of our lives and the people of the world. Let me explain. There's a reason why we all love eating so much. Eating is fun, and Marie Kondo will 100% say it sparks joy. <laughs> the relationship our brain has with our food isn't just to tell us we're hungry. Eating specific food activates our brain's reward system and releases happy chemicals such as serotonin or dopamine. And it's because of this that food is a strong trigger for memories, emotions, and states of mind. It's also why whenever I smell or eat Play-Doh, I'm back to being a sticky kindergartner. <laughs> it's this concept that allows food to be the back door into someone's mind. It creates memories, which is a way to get closer to someone and forms bonds with them. The University of Montreal conducted a study. That showed how children who had family dinners were much closer to their parents as they got older. Apparently, singing "Beans, Beans, the Magic Fruit" and remarking your distaste for Brussels sprouts was somehow key to having a good relationship with your parents. Now, let's focus on how、oh, um, eating with others also has its benefits, even once you're older. Go out for lunch with a friend or a coworker that you haven't really gotten to know. This does not mean that you have to spend two hours having dinner with your boss only to hear about how Karen is taking the kids. <laughs> spend time eating with people you seek to have good relationships with. Personally, spilling tea with the squad at Denny's is a very intense experience that forms strong bonds. Only to be broken by fighting over the bill. Now, let's focus on how food can bring you closer to the people of the world. And personally, in Indian culture, 
T, we call it chai, is a staple. Many of you have heard of it, but the reality is that <laughs> chai, the reality is that chai is not just for South Asians. Anyone can drink it. In fact, South Asians offer it to strangers all the time. Here's one example. One day, a guy from Craigslist was interested in buying a washing machine, so he came in. His plan was to just to take a quick peek and go. But my dad had two cups of chai sitting in the living room for him. The guy was really confused, and hopefully, instead of feeling uncomfortable, he understood that chai is a universal form of hospitality. It doesn't matter if it's your cousin or Craigslist guy that comes through that door, they both get a cup of chai that is piping hot, so you'll have to stay longer to finish it. <laughs> or take Muslims, for example, a group that is popularly misunderstood by the media. I and other Muslims around the world celebrate Ramadan, which is a month of intermittent fasting. It may not seem like a big deal, but Ramadan can teach you a lot about Muslims. Breaking fast in Ramadan is called iftar, and it's an incredibly unifying experience. Friends and family invite each other every other day just to eat together. And the greatest amount of compassion is shown in this month. It's something anyone can understand by going to your local mosque or having your Muslim friend invite you over for iftar, even if you're not fasting. And as Americans, we're familiar with Thanksgiving. Every year on the 4th Thursday of November, America takes a week off to eat a stuffed bird. <laughs> Thanksgiving can teach you a lot about American culture. There's football, the family gatherings, and of course, the political arguments, which can all be conveyed during Thanksgiving. Japan has a 2,000-year-old tea ceremony, which can teach you about their love for discipline while Germany has Oktoberfest, which can teach you about their fun-loving nature. <laughs> the concept of meals is present in every culture, and I encourage those of you who identify with the specific culture to invite others to participate in food-related traditions. Invite your friends, invite your coworkers, maybe not your boss, but use the magic words, free food, <laughs> <laughs> to disguise a meal as a way to teach someone about your people. Um, this is how food, food-related cultural practices, can not only help you see the people of the world, but also be them, understand them, so you can become more familiar with them. And hopefully, it'll shoot down some prejudice you might have against a certain demographic. Food has the power to bring people together by making memories. It serves as a window where you can peer into an unfamiliar group of people. The social interactions and cultural insight gained through food is invaluable. We don't really know what's at stake. So, <laughs> when dinner rolls by, <laughs> take the time to ask yourself, do I have a full stomach and an open mind? Thank you. <laughs>